A very good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer here in St. Peter's Church in Mount Rath. We begin our service on page 101 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. I'll just read to you the words of hymn number 338. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Breathe your Holy Spirit into every heart. Bid the fears and sorrows from each soul depart. Thus, with quickened footsteps, we will go our way, watching for the dawning of the eternal day. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle, the Venite, we recite together. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading. A 
a reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came down upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our psalm this morning, I've chosen for us Psalm 139, verses 1 to 10. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading. A 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is the Te Deum Part 1 on page 106 of the prayer book. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. The third reading, the Gospel reading. Our Gospel this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. A certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. 
When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said to her, Where have, they, have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third canticle this morning is the Canticle Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Again, we recite together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and to the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be forever acceptable to you, my God, our Lord and Rock of Salvation. Amen. I think there's tremendous parallels between our gospel this morning and the situation in which we find ourselves when we talk about tombs. Uh, it's very easy to feel our, ourselves almost locked away as we are at present indeed with Friday evening's announcement of the uh, lockdown across the country. There's an even more heightened awareness of the need, rightly so, for us to be at home as much uh, as possible in order to halt the spread of this awful coronavirus pandemic. But the reassurance to us is that, yes, we are separate, yes, we are away, yes, we are at the verges, the edges in, as it is, as we are locked away in our homes. But yet we're very, very conscious that just in our gospel story there this morning, Christ is indeed very, very present to us indeed. I, I think a, a lovely part of that gospel there is the way Martha and Mary sent for Jesus and on hearing that they're anxious and that he's needed and that Lazarus is un unwell, Jesus doesn't immediately jump onto a horse and race his way back. Uh, he very calmly and collectedly responds to the appeal of the heart from Mary and uh, Martha. So Jesus very much hearing that call out, hearing the cry of their heart, we know from the scripture that Jesus knows exactly what has happened, that Lazarus is dying, that Lazarus is, is dead. Uh, the disciples were told think that Lazarus is merely asleep, that Jesus is going back to wake him up. So Jesus is fully aware of why he's been sent for. He knows fully all of the uh, cry of their heart, indeed, as he knows the cry of our own hearts, our own fears, worries, and anxieties, which we call out to the Lord when we turn to him in prayer, those anxieties and worries, which for us are very, very pressing and real indeed. And indeed, as our current situation is, as we are, are at home in lockdown and the fear of this awful coronavirus, this very real and present danger for all of us crying out to the Lord in prayer. And sometimes we expect God almost to answer immediately, that to just suddenly jump down and get in there and sort everything out immediately. But we forget that God's ways are not our ways and the need and the way he looks at the world in his care, the entire universe in his care. It's not simply, of course not, that he doesn't care. It's not that in any way he deliberately delays responding to our care, but he wants us to trust and to hope in him, to not lose hope, to not lose uh, faith, to, yes, of course, to turn to the Lord in prayer, but to be confident that our prayer has been heard and will be answered to be very confident that what we say to the Lord in our hearts, in our prayers, and with the help of God when we gather once again as a community on Sunday to, to worship the Lord as a community, to turn to him in prayer, that yes, indeed, he does hear. Yes, indeed, he does answer. But his ways are not our ways. His way of dealing with the fears, the worries, and the anxieties of our, our hearts is yes, he has heard. Yes, he will answer, but doing things in his own way. So our 
response to that is to be very, very confident in the words of our Lord, in the words of our Gospel there to us this morning, in the Gospel of St. John, that yes, indeed, the Lord does indeed hear our prayers and will make answer to them, but to trust and to hope, to be calm and to, to allow him to come enter into our hearts, that spirit of calm, that spirit of, spirit of right judgment, of trust and hope, and love of the Lord, confident that he will respond in time. Amen. We turn now to page 112 of the prayer book, The Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday in Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the glory of his victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Collect of Lent is Collect 2 of Ash Wednesday on page 259 of the prayer book. We pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the first collect of morning prayer, the collect of peace, together we pray. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, 
that in all works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people, let us pray. Lord God, eternal shepherd, you tend your church in many ways and rule us with your love. You have chosen Bishop Michael to be a shepherd of your flock. Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love, by leading with fidelity those entrusted to his care here in our diocese. And may your church always shine as a sign of hope for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day we pray for those who have lost their jobs, those who are now unemployed as a result of the spread of this coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those suffering financial loss. We pray for those anxious and worried about their financial situation as they try to provide for their families and for the education of their children. We pray, Lord, for the creation of jobs as soon as this pandemic is over and that economic decisions will be made by our government which will benefit all our people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the homeless. We pray for those most at risk during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those living in hostels together. We pray for those who are homeless and are in poor health. We pray for all of those who are anxious and worried at this time, in particular those who have nowhere to call their own. Lord, grant them peace, hope and consolation and inspire others to help them during this particularly difficult situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those who are suffering from the coronavirus and particularly here in the land of Ireland, for people all over our world at this time. We ask you, Lord, that we, our families and our community, be spared and kept safe from this very dangerous epidemic. Guide the hearts of, and minds of medical scientists who are currently re researching for a vaccine for this virus. Inspire them, Lord. And Lord, we give thanks for all our medical personnel, for all of those who across our land are working so hard to keep us safe from the spread of the coronavirus. We turn our thoughts to the members of our civil defence, the members of the defence forces on Garda Shikona. We think too of our prison officers and all the work that they are doing at this time. We pray for all medical personnel, for those in the emergency services, those nurses and doctors in our hospitals across the country, nursing home workers, care workers, social workers. We pray for all who are trying to keep us safe. Lord, bless the good work of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who are lonely, anxious, worried, or who are sick at home at this time. Lord, we ask you to lay your healing hands upon them all to reach out your hands and touch their hearts. Let them know that they are not alone, that you are with them at every step of life's journey to guide and to protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before our final blessing, I'll read to you the words of hymn number 80. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun, moon and stars in their courses above, 
join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. I hope you have enjoyed this service of morning prayer. There will be again a service of the late evening office on Tuesday at 8 o'clock and a morning prayer for Thursday morning at 11 a.m. On Sunday coming, which will be Palm Sunday, we will again have a, a service of morning prayer at 11 o'clock. Mind yourselves, keep safe and God bless you all. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.